go elsewhere, but did you stay in contact? Were there times where, you know, because of him being a mentor and a friend that you call with a question or, or even vice versa oh, yeah. that he would contact you? No, we just, we always kept in, in contact. Um, I would always call him and ask him advice on certain things and, you know, he, he would help me out through the whole process and, and just over the years, you know, we always vacationed together and we always met throughout the off season and, and talked about, you know, anything new that he was doing, anything new that I was doing. So we always bounced ideas off of each other and, you know, it, it's always a good sounding board from a guy that you know pretty well. Yeah, he we he mentioned it to me and then he just kind of skipped the whole conversation because he knew that you know my wife's we're expecting in June so we have a baby on the way so that kind of had a lot more influence with him talking to Megan about this so uh, at the end of the day I, I kind of laughed at it because we say it was her decision but you know we we did sit down and have a, a detailed conversation on you know how we expect things to go and how he wants things to be and and. Uh, you know, here it is now, so I'm here. Back to the quarterbacks. Um, you, know, you said you have a diverse group of quarterbacks in terms of skill set. Do you find that to be advantageous, or is that more of a challenge? No, it's advantageous. I, I, I like just bringing in good football players. You know, if you, if you look at the quarterbacks that I've had, um, you know, with Davis Webb last year, he'd be my fifth quarterback going into the NFL, and they're all different. You know, Davis is a 6'5 guy that is just a purely a pocket passer. Johnny Manziel won the Heisman off of his athletic ability. You know, Gino was a great uh, pocket passer, but was capable enough to, to get out of the pocket and make some plays. And you just you go through all those quarterbacks in Case Keenum and Brandon Weedle, they're all different. And you got to get real close with them to figure out what they're good at. And then I think that's where you go out there and you put them in the best position to have success. So once you get out there in the spring ball and all through fall camp and summer, you'll figure out how what these kids are good at and then you try to learn on that for the rest of the way. You know, when uh, Shannon would you know be part of play calling and, and Dana would always say that he has the final say, but uh, <laughs> I think you said that Shannon took more chances. I mean, can, can you compare and contrast it all the way that you call a game maybe compared to what Dana Damn. is known for? Uh, you know, I, I, I think just there, there's a lot of similarities, I think, in how I, I've called them, well, how Dana called it last year and how I called it last year. Um, it looks on paper like we threw it all the time, but I, I didn't have a very good run game, so I was throwing a ton of perimeter screens. Uh, so we were blocking on the perimeter, and that was considered run game. But uh, that's where I kind of differ a little bit. I like to especially with the quarterback like Will who can get it out there. I like to spread it out a little bit more and make it easier and get those defend, defenders to spread the field and, and guard the sideline to sideline. But at the end of the day, I love to take shots down the field. I think that you know, if you've got talented kids that can run fast and you got a quarterback that can throw it to you, you might as well try to take some shots at it. Thanks, Jake. No problem. When it comes to your relationship with Dana, I mean, where did that really start to blossom uh, when you when you first came? Um, so you probably go back to 2009 when I started working for him. Uh, I was a graduate assistant. Um, you know, I just left the University of Tulsa. Um, loved what Dana did, and there was uh, Cliff Kingsbury was there as well. I just wanted to be a part of it, so I, I did everything I could imaginable from getting coffee to making copies to coaching O-line running backs, just doing anything that they said, and I think uh, he liked my work ethic from, from there, and he took me to Oklahoma State, and I think at Oklahoma State is where it really truly blossomed because of uh, all the positions that he put us in. Where did your, your love for, for offense and play calling really start to develop? You. Um, you know, I, I think after I, I, you spend a year at Oklahoma State, and you're learning, and you know you're, you're working with quarterbacks, and you come here for two more years with you know Gino, and uh, you, you have some pretty good success, and you know you're trying to advance your career, and you know what would be the next step, and that would be to call plays, and uh, you know I thought it was time I had an opportunity come. You know I wasn't looking for any opportunities. It's just this one came across my desk, so I was like, all right, let's go. You know, if an opportunity comes, you, you just got to take it run even if you're not completely ready for it yet and and uh, you know and I wasn't at times and I learned from it and I grew and I thought that over the years that I, you know I became a better play caller and eventually I led it back here to Morgantown. One year. One year. Yeah. You know it I went in open armed with it and uh, I said I was going to embrace the culture because it was a culture that was uh, completely opposite of the way I was raised and grew up in, and uh, I loved it. I loved my time out there. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's great weather all the time, and, you know, they didn't – I thought we had some good kids, and we ended up being a top-ten offense, so I, I enjoyed my time out there.
Is Megan still really competitive? I used to cover her when she was a gymnast <laughs> here. She's she one is. of the most intense competitive people. She is. You know, I, I appreciate that about the about her and her competitive nature. When it comes to having a guy like Dan Gerberry as a an analyst, what does that lift give you guys as an offense? It's good. <laughs> like he brings a lot of uh, humor into the room too. He's a, he's he's an awesome coach. He's an awesome person. I'm excited for his input. You know, I'm going to lean on him a lot on just any ideas that he brings to the table because he's got NFL experience. Um, he's he's been a part of this offense. He's been a part of offenses that attach a lot of tight ends and run the ball and get creative that way. So uh, it's going to be fun to see his input on uh, on certain situations.